Ray Rice. Yes, Ray Rice. So, this past Monday, a new video of Ray Rice and the incident with his wife. Now, you might remember we did a video, only his our biggest video to date. Now wife. Then his then girlfriend, now wife. Now wife. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They were they were just engaged at that point. They are now married. Um, everybody saw the original video that came out back in February, where Ray Rice is dragging his unconscious then fiance out of a hotel um, elevator. And it came out later that he had hit her. He had done something to knock her unconscious. Well, then we had Ray Rice go on probably the biggest spin tour to try to spin this in the best positive light for himself. Not only did he lie himself, he had his then-girlfriend, fiancé, now-wife lie for him, it seems like, and uh, he lied to the NFL. He lied to his own team. Um, and if he didn't lie to those people, there's something up. So what happened what was, was on Monday. He said? What was the well, lie I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. Uh, on Monday, on Monday, they released TMZ Sports. Which how did TMZ get this video before the NFL? I have no clue, no clue at all. But TMZ because Sports this is what they do. Well, yeah, like, but but, literally what they do is they they go they talk to people like, hey man, I'll give you some money, give me some extra footage from whatever you have. But still, you would think that an NFL investigation, especially with all the power the NFL has as an organization in America, would have gotten this video a long time ago. But again, we'll talk a little bit about yeah. that as we go on. But um, so the video shows Ray Rice in the elevator with his then fiance. I'm just going to say wife from now on, so you know he she was his fiance at that point, but now she's she he, she right, is we'll his on. wife. Okay, so so it shows them in the elevator. And what happens is it looks like they're getting into a little bit of an argument. They're talking back and forth, back and forth. Then you see Ray Rice. I don't know if he hits her, but he definitely puts his hand up to her face and pushes her. So a lot of people I know call that a smush. Pushes her away. He takes a step back. She gets obviously angry that he laid his hands on her in such a way and starts moving towards him. Now, there are different accounts. Uh, I've heard from some people that if you hear the audio of the video, she spits at him. Um, but I've also heard it the other way around where Ray spit on her, so I'm not quite sure how that goes. But all I know is, irrefutably, she takes one step forward towards him, obviously angry but not raising her hands, so his earlier defense of she was hitting him doesn't apply, and he, boom, right, left, right cross, right to her face. She goes flying into the elevator wall and then knocks her head against that and falls unconscious onto the floor. Then they kind of fast forward a little bit in the video and they show him dragging her unconscious body out of the um, the elevator. And so this led, after this video was released, this led to the Ravens cutting Ray Rice. They terminated his contract. And then the NFL suspended him indefinitely. Now, why and the it took... there hmm? being... And can we explain what the difference is there? So, Because people might think that what's the difference between suspending him indefinitely and he's already cut? Well, one is done by the NFL and one is done by the uh, Ravens. Well, the, the suspension yeah. definitely means that he can't play for any team now. Yes, exactly. He cannot play for any team for a certain period of time, uh, undetermined period of time right now, and the Ravens were just cutting ties with him. Now, this is... It's horrendous. If you watch the video, it's horrible. I mean... Earlier, he had said that it was self-defense. If you watch our previous video, they had a press conference where he trots his wife out there. He goes out there, his defense lawyer goes out there and says that she hit him at first. Yes, he hit her back. He shouldn't have done that, but she was attacking him. She initiated the aggression almost. And now we find out that that's totally untrue because whatever she might have said to him, I don't care what she said to him. She was obviously saying something bad to him because she was upset with him. And, but he was saying something bad back to her. He was the one who initiated the physical contact. He put his hands to her face first, then took a step back and clocked her and knocked her unconscious. Now, the lies I was talking about was, he, it is said that he actually sat down with Roger Goodell. He brought his wife in there, and she pleaded. She said, please, please don't do this. Uh, he's a good guy. He has, he's never happened before. Please don't suspend him for too long. Give him a second chance. He sat down with the Ravens. Did the same thing. Said, hey guys, it was this is what happened. She was hitting me. I was drunk. I couldn't control myself. I hit her. None of that is good, but when you see this video, it just takes it to the next level of bad. It, it, it's just it's horrendous. So, it um, shows that, that's, that it wasn't really that way. 
I mean, he clearly didn't even look like even the drunk idea. He might have been, but he wasn't like stumbling around drunk. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know how he handles. He his had alcohol, enough composure but... to punch her square in the face, and, and he was and... rather calmly dragging her out of the elevator too. Yeah. Like I was kind of surprised. Well, he was just like, "Up, oh, gotta drag her out." And not only that, after he drags her out of the elevator, because um, they were actually TMZ, I believe, uh, interviewed a few of the security people. Um, security saw this happening in their security room. They saw him hit her in the face and knock her out. So they all rushed well, down to the because they had the that's where the video comes from. It's from yeah. their security videos. Yeah, exactly. So they they ran down to the they rushed down to the scene and uh, they were trying to figure out what happened and he Ray Rice then says, "Oh, she's drunk, she's drunk. Don't call the cops. Don't call the cops. Don't worry about this." And they're like, "No, we're reporting this to the police." So the first thing Ray Rice does is pick up his cell phone and call his defense attorney. That's what I'm assuming he calls his defense attorney. He called somebody. This is what the security guard said and said, "Come get me. I'm about to be arrested in 10 minutes." Now, uh, to be fair, I'll I'll give him the benefit of the doubt or not really, cuz we already know what happened. But <laughs> In general, that's not... I wouldn't say that that's a bad thing. I would say that, especially for anyone who has that much money, he should have been trained, and it's that high profile, he should have been trained by now to know anytime he's going to be involved with the police, get his lawyer involved. I'm not saying but, that he shouldn't get his yeah. lawyer involved. I'm saying that his first phone call should have been to a 911 to get an ambulance there because he doesn't know what the damage he just did to his wife. Because she's still laying unconscious okay. on the floor. She, his first call well, is to, that, to save himself, that, not to save his wife. He really should have been calling 911 before he saw the security guards. Security yeah. guards are already taking care of that side of things, but... Yeah, but still, I mean... The, the 911, uh, like, either... I, maybe in the elevator he doesn't have reception, but as soon as he got out of the elevator... Well, they he weren't in the elevator for that long after yeah. he hit her. I mean, maybe 20 seconds after he yeah. hit her. Either way, like, if, if we're going to go with the should have called 911 first, it really should have been even before he talked to the, the security guards. Yeah. It well, I mean, immediately. He shouldn't have moved her body. It, again, he, yeah. It, don't know. It, and he shouldn't have moved her the way he moved her, just drags her lifeless body out of there. So, yeah. so, so now we know what really happens. And so let's take a look back at everything else that happened before we knew about how he really struck her and the, how the incident really went down. So, first of all, he brings his wife in to meet with Roger Goodell. Now, again, I'm no psychologist, I'm no expert, but if you've heard about domestic violence victims, I did a little bit of reading on it, what happens is these people, their self-esteem goes down. They believe that they did something to to encourage it's, it's or very deserve... Common. Deserve that is a this this action against them. I mean, that's why you've seen in movies, look what you made me do, and oh, I didn't mean to make you do that. You know, it's you know, you've cooked the wrong dinner. Husband beats his wife, and then the wife says, "Well, that's my fault for not cooking them the proper dinner." I mean, it's not. It's not their fault. Those victims, you're a victim. You have no blame in this situation. There is no reason for them to buddy or you know strike to the face. It's it's just that's number one. So Roger Goodell lets them come in and interviews them both together. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is necessarily the case, but if you look at it, it kind of makes sense. What, do, what would a domestic violence victim do with the abuser right next to her in a meeting like that? Would she tell the truth, or would she say something to make sure that he doesn't hit her again later? The problem. <laughs> I don't even know if you would have to go that far. Like you were saying, like the psychology sometimes really is they really do blame themselves. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, I'm somewhat convinced, especially with the statements we've seen from from um, his wife since then, Janae Rice, that she really does think that this was not that big a deal and that he should be let off. And she's she's genuinely upset that he's being kicked out of the league uh, for this action. She doesn't see it as um, that big a deal. And it's really, she sees it as just something between her and him and that maybe she really does think that, well... I egged him on, or something like that. I, again, um, I, I, like, again, I'm, I'm sorry that, that it feels it's that way. Not, it's not something we should accept, but I can see that maybe she really does think that. Because that's, that's the situation. Yeah, that, that can be kind of a, a, you know, that's a problem in our society, because that's, it's, domestic violence is not something it, that has been recorded the over the, with, the years. I mean, yeah. this is really something that's really come up in the uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, as being more of a problem, because women have figured out, hey, if you're hitting me, I do not have to take this. What you're doing is not right to me. It, it's it's wrong. You know, you probably have the problem, not me. Which is the way that it should be, because that's that's how it is. You know, it's not the abused person's fault. It's the abuser's fault. 
And that's just part of the culture that I, I'm, hopefully this will help open up some of the eyes of people that might be abused out there. And they realize, hey, I don't have to take this. This is not right. There are people out there that will help me. I mean, I'm sure there's domestic violence hotlines, the local police in any place you're living in. If somebody is laying their hands on you, whether you be the man hitting the woman or the woman hitting the man, it doesn't matter. Whatever type of abuse is going on should not be happening. Simple yeah. as that. Especially and it should like also this. be clearly understood um, something like, I don't know if you're aware, but Patrick Stewart's actually very uh, uh, invested in dealing with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. His his father was uh, violent against his mother a lot. and that So it's serious for him, and he used to say that, um, you know, even if... Because he used to hear the arguments back in, I don't know, the 40s, 50s, saying like, oh, well, did the police would tell ask his mother, like, oh, well, you were clearly arguing with him. It takes two to argue, and he would say, no, it's not. But even if even if she had done something to A, come on, there's no excuse mm -hmm. for using this kind of violence yeah, against, exactly. against, your, uh, against your spouse or against anyone, really, in that situation. Like... And just like here, like Janae, even if she was egging him on, even if she was threatening to, to hit him, even if she spit on him, like matter. some people have even said, she, she spit on him. It doesn't still warrant not acceptable. Getting knocked out. Not acceptable. Yeah, it does not warrant being not. And and she even said at one point, one of the security guards also reported that she said, "How could you do this to me? I'm the mother of your children." But obviously, she's not still going with that line of thinking, unfortunately. But but like uh, getting back to where we were, so she, they meet with Goodell, and he has. You know, he, he doesn't even have the wherewithal to say, okay, Ray, you step out of the room. I'm going to talk to her, see what went on. You know, doesn't do that. They meet with the Ravens, same thing. They're both in the room together. And then uh, they didn't even meet with the owner. I think they just met with the GM and the vice president of operations. So, you know, they didn't really meet. So it's weird. And then the whole press conference thing was kind of Ray Rice saying, hey, I'm putting my wife out there and I'm going to say, and a lot of people, this is what I've heard too. Now, I don't know if it's totally true, but that Ray Rice really wanted to have that press conference. And Ray Rice really pushed it forward to have his wife there as well. Uh, so, you know, that's that's neither here nor there. That, but, that's um, actually a common thing for politics. Like, that's a common PR move that yeah. if there was some conflict that people see your wife involved in, have a press conference where you discuss well, it with you your see wife. With politicians there. with infidelity, especially, you yeah. see that. Yeah. So, but. And then, you know, but then it also makes me start to think, okay, so the NFL said that they did this crazy good investigation. They went through all the things. They got all the tapes. They got everything that they were supposed to get, and they decided a two-game suspension was warranted. Now, again, Goodell did come back later and say that I was too light on him. I should have given him a heavier suspension, but... And they did change their policy. They after, did. Before the video came out, to their credit, and uh, after that time to say that, from now on, we'll do six game suspension. I think was the minimum. Yeah, six game suspension. With. Which, if that's the new policy, they broke the policy already by indefinitely suspending Ray Rice. So that's kind of. I think. Well, unless if that was a minimum suspension. No, I believe that was that was the 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 maximum. That was the standards. You get suspended for six games for your first incident. You get suspended. For okay. Ban to lifetime ban after that. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go into that one later and yeah, yeah, uh, the logistics of that one. But we, we can move yeah, on. So, to so the other problem I'm having is not only with what Ray Rice did, what how he treated his wife, and how it almost looks like he paraded her around to make her make everybody else think that she was not guilty, but it was also on the handling of the NFL side, because apparently. Now, this is, uh, I've been reading this in different news sources. Apparently, they received the said video that TMZ released last Monday on April 9th. There was even a recording uh, of a voicemail from a female executive from the NFL uh, corporate branch, I believe, um, saying that, yes, we have received the video. Thank you. It is even more horrible than we thought. So, Goodell has come out and said that the first time he saw the video was on Monday. The Ravens organization has come out and said the first time they saw the video was Monday. But it's been said, and almost proven, that they have all had access to this video before then. So what was going on? Were they covering stuff up? Were they Did they just hope this would all go away? I mean, I really... Were they were the particular players that are of focus, Goodell, the Ravens organization, maybe they really didn't watch the video. Maybe they wanted to have deniability in case anything came out. Maybe they knew what was going to be on there, and they said, 
all right, well, we want to sweep this under the rug anyway. Let's not watch the video yeah, well, so that we can say that we haven't seen it. And, but but still, I'm sure is, someone at the NFL did that's see almost, it. That's almost more despicable than than seeing it. I'm, and you yeah, know, that, It's just like I'm going to close my eyes to what's going on and hope that nobody notices. So, I, I mean, Pete, there's a lot of people out there calling for Roger Goodell's job. I, I don't think you should go that far. Um I don't think anybody. I don't think he should be fired as his position because he has done a pretty darn good as commissioner, locking down on a lot of different things. But it's like, what do you? Where? Where's the disconnect here? Why are you being punishing people so much for smoking marijuana and not punishing people enough for hitting their wives? I mean, there's a little bit of a disconnect on the policies. So, I'm not exactly sure what to say about that. But. I, I I can say, I think the the thing with the policies is, the Drug substance abuse or use uh, is a little bit more. It had been more of a hot button issue in sports. It's more prevalent. In, and thankfully, it's, a big it's thing more prevalent. In it seems like that they want to cut down on, and that they know. For instance, like we've talked about many times before, it's really tarnished um, the MLB's reputation. Even though the MLB's reputation is mostly about steroids, NFL wants to stay away from anything that can be related to that. So, yeah. and that's why they're they they hit that one hard and people think about that more. Yeah. Domestic like, still, like, uh, abuse, person. even though it's a very common crime, we don't usually think about that with sports players as much. It's not as hot button of a thing with sports players. So they probably they, they don't really address it as much because it doesn't come up as much, at least as far as we're aware. Now granted it could have come up more and we just don't usually have a tape of it. No, but, yeah, that's well. true. Um, but yeah it's just it's just a really it's just a bad situation, and I've heard some people stand up and applaud the Ravens, saying, oh, good job, you cut them. No, not good job. You guys half-assed your investigation, suspended them for two games, which is nothing. It's a mere pittance, and then when the the crap hits the fan, then you do the right thing. You, you're kind of forced into a corner to do the right thing, which, again, I mean, I'm not... Yeah, I'm hating on the Ravens organization. You guys didn't do a good job. If anybody should be fired, it should be those guys who didn't fully complete everything, and, and you know, I, it's yeah, just it, a very disappointing situation. It is clear to me, like we talk about why didn't they do this before and all these things, there, there's an obvious reason why. This is, why are they changing it now? Why didn't they do it before? It's a business decision. They and wanted to keep Ray Rice sad. around. They also want, and, and also they wanted to hope that um, people wouldn't think that, this, that they had done something and wouldn't think that it was as bad big of a problem as it was by the way that they reacted and they probably didn't want to know what was on that tape and didn't want to have that tape come out because again it just even if they address it severely they knew that it was going to be a problem for the NFL it looks bad on their whole organization they would wish it would just go away yeah. um, and then which is sad that they almost put their money their pocketbooks yeah. and their record for the season over somebody else's well-being now, yeah. again, I don't know Ray Rice. I've never and met then, him personally, and I don't know Jaina Rice. I don't I don't know if this is a one-time incident or this has happened multiple times. I just know that anytime this happens, there's something very wrong, and yeah. something severe needs to happen to fix it. Now, I'm not saying that Ray Rice is beyond and redemption. We, and can, there is um, a real need to send a message. Like, you know, some people may be saying, well, if she wants to get over it, is it really... Um, are we really helping her in this situation? We might not be helping her. The whole point, I think, is really to say that this is not acceptable in our society uh -huh. in general, and especially from elite athletes that are at the top of their game that can do some of the most violence and most damage to people. And the people that are at the forefront of um, uh, celebrity status, we do not accept it from them. We do not accept it from anyone under any circumstances. And hopefully this will, this will, if somebody is scared out there, if there's a man or a woman, because don't think that this is just men hitting women. There is plenty of cases out there of domestic violence of women against men. So I just hope that this case might inspire people to say, hey, this is not right. Society doesn't believe it's right. Why should I accept it and get help? So, you know, that's that's hopefully the silver lining is this helps more people step forward yeah. if they're having this issue. And, and I don't know if this was on the the docket for tonight, but I'll, I'll throw it out there. There has been some good coming from this, of the uh, of awareness anyway. Uh, particularly, there was the big um, um, trend of why I stayed, of domestic violence victims telling their story, why they stuck around in these bad situations, and why they left. 
uh, for the ones that did leave eventually. What helped them eventually get out of that situation? Mm. So, but it is, uh, it, 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 we went a little bit longer on this story than I really wanted to. But uh, you know, it is kind of an important issue, just not only in sports but in life. So, you know, let us know what you think. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, hit us up at, at Words for My Face on Twitter, Words for My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. And <laughs>